What's up, everyone? It's Eric with Option Edge, and today I want to talk about hedging with calendar spreads. Okay, so first things first, what is a calendar spread? Um, so I'm on Stephen Place's uh, Investing with Options site. It's a very good source of information. Um, so here's the uh, definition here. A calendar spread is also known as time spread. The kind of option strategy is where you buy and sell two different options with the only variation being the calendar month of expiration. So here in this uh, picture, let me see if I can zoom in. We see that the this is a call calendar spread. If you notice the strikes are the same and they're both calls, the only difference, the quantity is also the same. The only difference is you are uh, selling the front month or the, the month that expires earlier and you are buying the longer dated back month option, okay? And, but they're at the same strike prices, okay? So this is sort of what right here, this is what the, um, what the P&L graph looks like. So basically, and I have a, uh, let's get into my little, quick little slideshow. Basically, um, you want the stock to get as close to the strikes as possible. So going back to here, um, if we sold and bought the 87 and a half uh, for, for Z, uh, XOM, you'd want the stock, the underlying, um, the underlying to approach 87.5 or be at 87.5 right on the dot when that front month, month expires, okay? And let's get to this, just a quick little slideshow. I'll play, let's play. So calendar spreads specifically for hedging. Okay, so the benefit of calendar spreads is it decreases your immediate risk in the trade. So let's say you think that, um, so I like to use these with uh, the uh, with ETFs, like for example, the QQQ and the SPY. Let's say um, the SPY is, uh, or the QQQ, either or, is being, is overbought, very overbought, which is sort of, kind of like the environment we're in now. And I'll show you on uh, a chart. So it the benefit is, let's if you were to buy a put in the QQQ, um, let's say a month out, you buy it, you wanna buy a put. Um, a lot of times uh, the indices or these ETFs like the QQQ, they tend, to, we're in a bull market right now, they tend to uh, keep going higher and higher. Stocks only go up, like Dave Portnay says. Um, and that's the way it's been for the last like almost 15 years. Um, so if you just buy a put, you could be wrong. So what you can do is also uh, sell a front month option, a shorter time uh, option. And this sort of helps to uh, decrease the immediate risk in the trade and it gets theta working for you, okay? By having a, um, a shorter expiration option, that you sell in the front month, you're, uh, that will most likely expire worthless and you'll collect some theta, okay? So you're not just buying a straight up put. Um, so yeah, we can be wrong at first. And like I said, I like this for the main indices, specifically for hedging. And I talked about the bull market, blah, blah, blah. All right, next, how to make money with calendar spreads. To make money, you want the price of the stock to get as close to your strike price as possible. So if you sold the 150 June, July calendar in Apple, max profit would be at the 150 if the stock approached 150 and stayed right at there, um, right during that June expiration, okay? Um, when do I like to put them on? Um, so one of the first things you want with this is you wanna trade this in a low implied volatility environment, low and low, yeah, a low IV environment. And the reason is because um, the back month option in your calendar will gain value if there's a spike in IV, okay? More so than that front month option. And the reason why this is the case is because back month options are uh, have a higher sensitivity to volatility. That means their vegas are higher. And let's end the show real quick. Let's demonstrate that with, um, let's just look at some options in, we're gonna go, let's go to, August 20th, okay? We're gonna look at, let's pretend we are, um, we're looking at the spider. Um, we think, so the SPY, uh, S&P 500 uh, has just gone down. Let's say we think it's gonna be in the next week or month, we think it's gonna go back up. So we think that the stock will start to approach um, 435, okay? So we would sell 
this the the this is going to be our front month option, and then we're going to pair that up with the uh, September seventeenth um, uh, later dated back option. Okay. So if we look at the if we look at the four thirty five, we see uh, let's look at our Vega. Okay. Let's uh, implied volatility and Vega. Let's pay attention to that. So if this is a fifty two Vega, thirteen uh, percent implied volatility. Let's go. 52 and 13. Let's now look at the 435 in the back month option. So now if you look at this Vega, it is not 52. It is uh, 70. Okay, that's a lot more. So Vega is your sensitivity to changes in implied volatility. Okay, so if you get an IV spike, you're going to see a um, greater response in options pricing in your back month month back month options. So this is sort of what we're taking advantage of with uh, calendar spreads. Um, so, uh, and then what I mentioned is I like to trade, uh, We while the front month option won't gain as much and has theta decay, okay, we talked about that. So that, that front month has theta decay working for us and it has a lower Vega. So a spike in IV won't affect the um, price of that front month option as much, okay? Um, I like to put these on when our indices are approaching the top of the Bollinger Bands here. So here we hit the Bollinger Band. I put one on here. We put hit the Bollinger Band. I put one on. And here's like a quick little, the a quick little. Uh, you know, these are a couple of the trades I've made. I made like 122 bucks. I mean, it's a big whoop, but um, it's better than nothing. And um, I'll take the small wins. Um, so back to here. Um, the back month option you bought has higher sensitivity to volatility, more Vega, and we already proved that on the option chain. Okay, and so another distinction to make is: uh, are you are you looking for income or are you looking for uh, are you speculating? So with hedges, that's more of a speculation because I'm going out of the money. So what I wrote here is income strike price is going to be close to the current price of the stock. Okay. Um, and that makes sense because you're going to collect some of that theta uh, decay. Okay, so speculation, you're expecting a move in the market. So uh, back to the QQQs. So the other day we were at um, three, almost 365. Okay, you could have sold, you could have said, all right, I think this is going to hit, uh, you know, this looks like a line of support. I could have sold the 355 um, calendar spreads and done the August and September 355 spreads. Okay. And those would be uh, pretty profitable right now if I had I put them on here. Um, back to the slideshow. Um, so for income, I, I'll select, uh, I like to select strikes slightly out of the money, but for hedging and speculative uh, calendars, I like to be more out of the money uh, to the downside. And you can also be out of the money to the upside if you think that, um, for example, you could come back back to here, you could say, hey, this is a, a quick little, um, just a quick little rip to the downside, but overall the trend is up. Let me speculate that I think in the next couple of days we'll be back up to the 362 level. So let me uh, buy the calls, uh, in the August, September calls, uh, 362, we're gonna buy and sell those calls at those strikes. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically, that's, that's, that's what I have for the slideshow and then, um, Going back for income, so here's an example. This is buying two, uh, buying and selling the 40 delta. Uh, I have DTE means 14 means uh, days till expiration. So I the front month option is going to be only two weeks long. The back month option expiration is going to be four weeks long. And this is an SPY. And here are the trade results. Um, if you take a 10% profit, 10% profit and you have your stop at 20%, okay? So with calendars, you're not gonna, like a, a good return on a calendar spread is like 20%. Like rarely like will you see much more, but you, you can. But uh, if, if you're making 20% um, on your calendar spreads, you know, that's a, that's that's pretty good. Um, so this is only, I'm taking, this is a back test. I took, I set the parameters to taking a 10% profit at the end of the day and here, I set the other parameter to taking a 20%. If, if we're down 20%, close out the trade um, at the end of the day. And you can see some pretty good um, 
uh, trade results over time. And if you keep rolling these and you just have this rolling, um, like each week you can have this stuff come in. Um, and one contract of the SPY resulted in an average like $31. So if you, um, if you set, let's say you sell 10 of them uh, every, and then you have them uh, in your portfolio on a rolling basis, you could be profiting 300 bucks every, every couple of days, which is sort of crazy um, with not much downside. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, so I, I did I did a trade in SPY. I did a couple trades. So uh, my longer dated. Um, so I have sort of a uh, bearish diagonal, which in a way is almost almost a calendar because the strikes are so close. Um, so I, I, I bought a later dated October fifteenth put, and then I sold a earlier dated uh, August twentieth put. This one happens to be more out of the money, whereas this is more in the money. Um, and then I did basically the trade on the slideshow with these parameters. I did the 40 deltas and I actually picked the strikes I picked. Um, let's see here. This is the put I am buying and, or excuse me, this is the put I am, yeah, I'm buying. Expiry date is 8-13, August 13th and the delta is about 41. And so I know these strikes are different by one, but for the most part, it's almost like a calendar. Um, and the reason why I did that is because I was trying to get the deltas to be exactly the same. Um, so that's the option I sold. So yeah, if you, I'm gonna try this out and I'm gonna try and, um, you know, roll these trades, these, uh, this right here and see if I can get that that good return on investment. And of course I tested this, this is back tested from like two or three years. So we're in a bull market. This is slightly out of the money calls. Like it makes sense that, yeah, if you're in a bull market and you do this for a year, you're gonna have great returns. Um, so number one is like understanding that, Hey, am I in a up, uptrend or downtrend for this? So, um, but yeah, that's basically it for income uh, calendar hedging. So hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a good way to make, um, when things start getting a little bit overbought, say, hey, let's let's maybe start to uh, buy some of these spreads, these put spreads in calendars and see if um, on the next downturn I can, you know, um, help hedge my portfolio a little bit. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out. Like and subscribe. And as always, this is not for uh, this is not um, this is not advice. OK, it's. Uh, every trade you make is on you. All right, peace.